Hey, welcome back. It is currently player one in direct fire phase, which is the American player. And we have plotted indirect fire here and here. Uh, the Americans have three, but we're only going to use two this time. The next one, I'm going to use one next turn, and then two, then one, then two, then one. Um, I'm not really writing down the actual plots and stuff since it's a pretty static position for the Germans. Um, I'm just letting the Americans plot wherever they want to and then roll for scatter like normal. Um, this is mostly just a learning game anyway, so I'm not going to worry too much about the details and mistakes and stuff like that. It's just kind of learning the system and having fun with it. So, without further ado, we are going to roll for this battery right here. Let's see here. Obviously we're within 20 hexes, so that's not going to have an impact. No pun intended. Uh, it is in a city hex. So we'll see what that does on the loss modification table. But anyway, let's uh, check for scatter. Aha, uh -huh. snake eyes. That's not good. That's a scatter too. Let's determine which direction the scatter is going to go. It's going to go in direction 6. And direction 6 is this way. Let's see. We're going to move it two hexes that way. One, two. And that's according to this chart here. This directional key, which is three, four, five, six, yes. Now we've got to keep it, we got to do a circular motion two hexes away. So we have to determine how far it's going to go. We've got two hexes in uh, a circular motion. And this is the apex of the hex, or of the battery, so these three hexes will be affected. But anyway, two away from this hex, and it only has to go two. So what is that? One, two. So it's going to impact in that hex right there. And I'll go ahead and roll the other one. It's not going to have any effect uh, on the artillery unless uh, our... It's not going to have any effect unless they both land in the same hex. And I still think you were, uh, <clears throat> I still think you uh, roll separately for effect. Uh, the second battery <clears throat> rolling for scatter. It is a six zero to twenty range, and it scatters in its hex, which is also a target. Uh, has an enemy target in there, but they're both going to be under the scatter rules. So, line these puppies up here. One of the bad things about old age, you uh, start to lose your fine motor skills. Alright, they both scatter. <clears throat> Let's find out. This will be basically what the, the German player would know. The um, American player would not know what's in here, but it's an armored unit. I don't know if you can see that or not, but yes, it is an armored unit in a town. Uh, vehicle units do not roll for loss modification uh, and with the effects of indirect fire. So it's going to be whatever, whatever the result is. So they're both scatter. Scatter is resolved on the automatic weapons chart. Um, with a strength of four. If it was on target, it would be an eight. Let's see here. Combat strength, <clears throat> like I said, is four. Uh, we rolled an eight, which is no effect. So this one has no effect. I'm going to put it two turns down on the turn record track. Because even though I'm not pre-plotting, <clears throat> there's still every every other turn for it. And the final one 
here. <clears throat> Once again, it has a fire effect of four. A seven, which is also a miss. So, the American artillery comes up empty. And where do I have it here? Uh, oops. Okay, we will have to roll for loss modification because this is primarily an infantry target. So, whatever. Um, so we will have to, uh, like I said, roll for loss modification. <coughs> Let's see what happens. Because there's two crewmen there. But the target unit, the moving vehicle, is inf infantry and dive laid, used for modifying results of both direct and indirect fire combat. Uh, minus one, friendly unit in the same hex, uh, more than one of the same type. Firing unit is nothing. Terrain, minus four. So right now we have a minus five. I get to roll one die. And let's see here. Hmm, oh yeah. Find the right cable here. Okay, it's somewhere. Oh, okay, I always forget. It's actually over here on the turn track. Uh, infantry loss modification table. I roll a three minus five is no loss. So, <clears throat> I forgot that any time there's a fire applied, you have to roll on the loss table. Even if there is a zero result. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I've already put uh, player two into their command uh, command positions. Basically, they're all going to be on Overwatch. Uh, let's see here. So we moved to player one movement phase, and this is where both the Allied player and the German player may. Allied player can move. The German player can uh, fire. Uh, I think it's opportunity fire against moving units. It might be overwatch fire. Either way, uh, over here we have two allied units that dismounted last turn. These American units are all in overwatch position. They don't really have a marker for that. I'm not going to mark the German ones. And um, This tank company here is inbound. And as well as those guys. They're all in bound formation. Um, so, without further ado, I think the, and I'll show you what's going on on the other side of the map in a moment, the western side of the map. I think we're going to double time, which gives them two movement points. One, two, and a facing change. Now they're adjacent, so they should be able to see what's in that hex. Uh, this platoon will do the same double time. One, two, Let's see. The half tracks. Let me double check and see if they have a fire strength or not. US vehicles. Strength and range. Mech infantry. Doesn't say anything about their. Well, they do have an M3. It has no gun type, but it does have two machine guns. So I guess they can participate, sorry for shaking the table, they can participate as well as the infantry. So I think what I'm going to do is move the, move the half tracks up and the infantry will be not on them but with them. Let's 
see how good or bad I can do this. Apparently it's not that great. Okay, and that leaves this company of tanks. They have nine movement points. I think they're going to swing around to this side. There is no movement point cost for moving up a slope for vehicles. And everything else is going to be pretty much up slope. Uh, moving into rough, one will cost two. So, one, two. And also moving into clear is also two for vehicles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll change facing. These guys are going to change facing. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And due to uh, doctrine, Allied and German units must stay within two hexes of one another. So, I may have to back that up if for some reason this unit doesn't make it. All facing changes are free. Two, four, six, eight. So he ends up, ends up within three hexes of its own company. I guess I should say all platoons must end up within two hexes of their company. All right, I'm going to finish movement for both sides and then I'll do overwatch, opportunity fire, that type of thing. Okay, so now we're going to go back and do opportunity fire and overwatch fire. As I said, these should have been done during the movement phase. However, I didn't want to get caught up in combat while I was moving units and stuff. And so I'm just going to go ahead and resolve that kind of as a separate uh, segment, even though they should be done simultaneously with movement. Uh, combat is resolved, um, it's not simultaneous, um, it's considered one side shoots, then the other side gets to shoot back and forth, and if you take losses, then when it's your turn to fire with that unit, you'll fire with the reduced strength. Um, let's see here. These American units went into Overwatch on the last, uh, on this turn, I believe. These guys moved, so they will not be eligible to fire at all. Let's see, all German units I decided were in Overwatch position, so I don't have to worry about marking them or anything. Not that there are any markers to mark them with. Uh... American uh, infantry had moved this turn to move adjacent to the uh, German positions. Thus, they cannot fire, but they can be fired upon, obviously. Um, so I can only fire at moving units that moved. The arc of fire, we'll go ahead and reveal what was there, because they're, they're adjacent now. Um, there's a PZ-4H, all the Germans are PZ-4H, with uh, four steps and difilade in a town. There's the uh, 88mm anti-take gun. And here there's nobody to spot this unit, so it's still hidden. This unit was going to take a shot at these infantry here, and probably still will, because its arc of fire is the front three uh, hexes. And its rear, obviously, is the uh, rear three hexes. So, I was going to go ahead and fire. I think I will go ahead and fire at the infantry. And thus, I'll reveal that unit. All units that are revealed are soon to be in difilade. So, we'll just move them out of the way for the moment. I will probably not announce attacks until I resolve them because I want to see the effects. The anti-tank, the 88, has a frontal arc of here, but they go out this way and out that way. So 
this tank is within line of sight and range of the anti-tank gun. So I'm going to go ahead and fire at it first, I believe. Um, actually, no, I don't. I actually want to fire at, well, I can only fire at moving targets. So it doesn't matter if I want to fire any of these three up here. I can't. So we will go ahead and resolve fire against this uh, M4 Sherman. And how we do that is, if I can remember what I'm doing here, <clears throat> excuse me, I have an awful uh, sinus congestion thing going. Um, we gotta decide first of all what the effect of that fire is. And this will be automatic. I'm gonna go with head and fire, not automatic. I'm gonna go ahead and fire main gun fire. To do that, we're going to fire at an enemy infantry unit, actually. So this fire represents main guns, firing high explosives, that type of thing. But I actually want to use automatic weapons. No? I'm shooting at the tank. I want to use main gunfire. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> we determined the target profile, uh, the profile of the target unit. I know I have some... Uh, tweezers here somewhere. So the target unit is going to be this is going to be a C class. And then we will find the type of gun, gun type of the firing unit and find its sub column on the target profile column. I'll try to show you this, but I don't know how successful we'll be with this camera and everything and the glare and all. Uh, but Pretty much, this is the target type, C, and on the 88, it's gun class is a 1. And the hex is, let's see, it's three hexes away. We're going to cross-index the 1 with the C. We're going to have a 6 um, on the main gun range attenuation chart. So we will be using that one to resolve our fire. But then we have to have the main gun and I take combat vehicle people, which is going to be related to that. Uh, German units, wait, I have the anti tank gun, sorry. Uh, let's see, number of vehicles are steps. So we have two steps firing from the anti tank gun, and we're going to have the strength of six. So we're going to use this column for the die roll down here. And it looks like with two landed tank guns firing with a six, um, we should stand a chance of scoring at least, uh, uh, let's see, should stand a chance of at least uh, knocking out one step. But of course you always have to roll the loss modification die roll to see if you actually do hit or do cause any damage or cause more damage or less damage. So, we know what that is. We know we have a strength of six, and we're gonna fire on the, uh, double check here real quick. We're gonna double, uh, we're gonna fire on the six column with two steps. So, let's see what happens here. See if I get this up here close enough. Yeah, probably not. Okay, I rolled 10. A 10 under 6 is no result. So the fire had no result, but we did roll a 1 on the loss modification table. So referring to the loss modification table, <sighs> there are no terrain effects at the moment. Well, yes, they're down at the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> it's been a couple days since I've been here been back to this game. The game's been on my table now for about a month, so I'm anxious to get it off the table and put something new up. Anyway, we have a minus two. If the vehicle's in deflated, it is not. It is moving, so that's a minus two. Let's see, it's not in column, so it's not suppressed. The parking unit's not suppressed. Modifications for clear, nothing. So it's basically a modification of minus two to the die roll loss um, result and that is a one minus two looking up here i can tell you that uh 
minus 2 is going to be 1, 1, <clears throat> minus 1, so there was no loss caused by that fire. Now, the allied units, and that was just me, uh, did I use, no, I used main gun, sorry. Now, any of the allied units in Overwatch can fire at any unit which just fired. So, I think this allied unit, which was in Overwatch, as indicated by the blank counter, uh, will fire at the anti-tank gun. It will fire its uh, automatic weapons instead of its uh, main gun fire. So, let's see how we do that. Basically, you take the number of steps in the uh, attacking unit and determine the number of vehicles or steps, cross index that number, the range in hexes between the two units. On the vehicle automatic weapons chart, the numbers of the attack strength roll two dice, cross in the die roll with the appropriate column on the automatic weapons combat results table. And roll your loss, so uh, uh, roll your die for your loss. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Loss modifications. Um, the M4 tanks. And let's see here. Vehicle automatic weapons. Number of vehicles. There's five units in an American uh, tank unit. So we're going to cross index that. Let me turn you down here without getting too crazy. See if it'll focus or not. So we're going to cross index five units over here with a range of zero to four, and it'll give us a five strength. So we're going to roll over here based upon in the middle column. We're going to roll two dice under the five. And it looks like we have a pretty good chance of suppression. Uh, but we'll see here. Let's see what happens. So, we'll roll two dice under the five strength. Result is a seven. Seven under the five, of course, is going to be no effect. So the machine guns firing on the anti tank gun have no effect at the moment. Let's see about loss modifications. The loss modification die roll was a four. The target unit is infantry and die fillet, so we're going to subtract one. Um, the only other modification is it's in a town infantry minus four, so we're going to subtract five from that for a minus one on the. Infantry loss modifications table, and let's see, there is a minus one for losses, because it's zero or less is a minus one, so no casualties were call, uh, no casualties were caused by the tank machine gun. Now, what it would do is it would shift over to the Germans. Any units with opportunity fire, or Overwatch fire, may now fire. Um, I guess either opportunity fire against another unit that moved. Did I do that wrong? Should my target have been the one that moved? Yes, it should have been versus the one that moved. I did, and then it missed. Okay, then he overwatch fired. And okay, well, I'm back on track here now. <clears throat> my sinus infection cold thing is uh, making me kind of loopy. Um, I'm going to go back and resolve the rest of the uh, opportunity overwatch fires on this end of the board and we'll see uh, what happens. That's a pretty quick overview of how main guns and automatic weapons fire. You can fire main guns or automatic weapons if the unit contains either or both. Um, they can fire on different targets. You can fire each system once per phase, I guess, you know, this is the movement phase, uh, when it's uh, appropriate, which is pretty much the movement phase, 
or there is a final fire phase. But the only units, I, like I said, that can fire are overwatch units. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve the rest of fire and we'll come back with the results. Okay, I went ahead and resolved fire on the uh, forces to the east. I was going to do some combat on the forces to the west. Um, however, I chose not to because it would not be an opportune time to do so. So, with the forces to the east here, there wasn't a whole lot of action. This infantry unit here was suppressed um, from fire from this armored unit. There was some fire between the anti-tank gun and uh, this unit, which was no effect. It was a uh, these units were moving the only way you can fire opportunity fire. This unit fired Overwatch fire on the anti tank unit with no effect. Um, some of that was due to loss modifications, uh, reducing or changing the die roll uh, combat effect. So, um, it looks like you have to get in fairly close to get in decent high odds attacks, although. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you want your combat strength pretty high on the automatic weapons combat results table, and that's usually by. Oh. Basically, having a full number of vehicles in your uh, platoon. Uh, the main gun, you really want a good gun type versus a poor uh, target profile. And then uh, hope for good uh, main gun and a vehicle combat results on that. So anyway, I know that makes no sense. I'm just rambling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play out the game, I think, a little bit. Play out a little bit more just to kind of explore the rest of the system. And I don't know if I'm going to film that or anything, but I will come back with the uh, final results of the game. Um, there's about... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, about 5 more turns or so, because this turn's about over. So, well, there's another player 2 movement, but nothing's set to move. So yeah, it should end pretty fast. We have battery, uh, allied artillery coming in, every uh, basically every turn. One on, a, one on one turn and two on the following, so um, that will probably make a difference once it starts to hit <clears throat> become accurate and stuff so anyway I think that's going to be it for right now like I said I'll try to come back when the game is over and pretty much show you the results of that but until then I will talk at you later